from today's machine learning class we will start our second part of third unit that is supervised learning uh, so in the supervised learning there are two categories first one is classification and second one is regression so in the third unit we are having only classification and in today's class we will see the supervised learning introduction that is introduction about the supervised learning here the types of machine learning examples of supervised learning classification model so this is the classification model and the classification learning step so these are the classification learning steps we will see all those things one by one first let us see the types of machine learning we already know that there are three types of machine learning algorithms first one is supervised learning and second one is unsupervised learning and third one is semi supervised learning apart from these things we have reinforcement learning also but that that is not available in our syllabus we have already studied this reinforcement learning in our machine learning itself that is artificial intelligence subject itself okay first one is supervised learning so when the learning is called a supervised learning we are having the training data set which is used to train the model okay so by using the training data the machine will learn by itself uh, and the data is also having its own label okay that is the label is otherwise called as the class label okay so the training data is a labeled data which is used to, to train the model so by using this training data the machine is learning hence it is called as supervised learning and second one is unsupervised learning so when come to unsupervised learning there is no labeled training data okay the training data has no labels the machine itself will understand the internal pattern internal pattern of the data accordingly it will cluster or group the data which is called as unsupervised learning and second one is that is the third one is semi supervised learning when come to semi supervised learning it uses small amount of labeled data along with the large quantity of unlabeled data okay so here the training data is having both labeled and unlabeled okay so this is called as semi supervised learning okay so here we are having three different types of learning first one is supervised learning and second one is unsupervised learning and third one is semi supervised learning when come to supervised learning the data is used to for training is labeled data that is the information is already available accordingly the machine will learn by itself right and second one is unsupervised learning here the training data has no label that is unlabeled data is used to for learning the system and semi supervised learning it uses both labeled data and unlabeled data okay this area so this is semi supervised learning here the supervised learning is the process of learning from training data by the machine that is the machine is learning the model by using the training data which is called as supervised learning okay we can relate this with the teacher supervising the learning process of a student okay so the student tries to learn a new subject for this the teacher will supervise his studies here the teacher is the training data okay so in the supervised learning the labeled training data provide the basis for learning and also the experience or prior knowledge or belief right so the machine will learn by using the training data that is labeled training data which is called a supervised learning algorithm let us see another example that is hospital example here the hospital is having two different types of ward first one is general ward and second one is icu okay maximum patients will be treated only in the general ward and the people who are in very serious condition they will be moved to icu because in icu the number of beds are very less the number of beds are very less okay now the hospital management will move the patients from general ward from general ward to icu whose health condition will become very serious or suddenly worsen 
then the patient will move to ICU and this is very difficult for the hospital management for planning and preparation uh, for the patient's uh, health condition okay because if the health condition is suddenly become worse then they moved to normal ward that is general ward to ICU isn't it so the hospital will need some additional support that uh, the prediction of health condition of patient right so when the health condition is worsen then immediately the patient will move to ICU okay for this they need to predict the health condition of all the patients in the hospital okay so this kind of prediction problem will come under supervised learning under classification okay that is the hospital already has all the patients record okay suppose uh, if the patient's health condition is very dangerous then immediately they will move to icu ward for uh, giving better treatment okay here the test result of newly administered patients are used to classify them as a high risk or a low risk patient so if the patient newly entered into the hospital we need to analyze the health condition of the patient if the patient is uh, that is a low risk patient then he will move to general ward otherwise if he is high risk patient then immediately he will shift to icu ward let us see some additional example for this supervised learning first one is prediction of result of a game based on the past and past analysis of result okay based on the previous game result we predict the result of the current game right and second one is predicting whether the tumor is malignant or not malignant means some serious tumor like brain tumor okay otherwise it may be a, a normal uh, tumor so we need to predict the seriousness of tumor by using the classification algorithm and the third one is price prediction so the price prediction is very important in domains like the real estate or the stock exchange so in the stock exchange every second the price will be changed isn't it price of the stock will get changed so we need a very powerful algorithm to predict a price of particular stock okay price prediction is also a supervised learning algorithm that is the classification model and next let us see the classification model uh, for explaining this classification model let us take two examples first one is predicting whether the tumor is malignant or non malignant okay and second one is price prediction of a real estate okay so in the domain real estate we need to predict the price price of a particular plot okay so in both the problem which are related to prediction only but in the case of tumor prediction we need to classify whether the tumor is malignant or non malignant isn't it so this is called as categorical or classical data and when come to the second one here we cannot classify the data but we need to predict the exact value of particular plot okay but this is not a class value price is not a class value isn't it so this is a numerical or continuous value uh, here we need to predict the exact or absolute value okay that is the problem to predict a categorical or nominal variable a problem to predict a categorical or nominal variable then it is known as classification problem the first problem will come under classification and second problem will come under regression okay hence the classification algorithm is used to identify the category of new data on the basis of training data here the training data is a labeled data labeled data okay so in classification the problem learns from the given data set 
the given data set is the training data set and it will classify the new data. The new data is the test data to the number of classes or groups. Right? So, these classes or groups are target. Right? So, for example, S or no, that is the new data will be classified into S or no, cat or dog, red, green, blue, that is the colors, spam or not spam, that is male classification. Okay, so these are some of the example of classification model. Okay, and here the classes are called as targets, labels or categories. This diagram explains a very simple classification model. Here uh, we are having labeled training data and test data, right? And that labeled training data will be given to the classifier. The classifier will learn uh, the data by using the label. After that, if the new test data is coming uh, for classification, then the classification model will assign the intel for this class. Okay, based on the information gathered from the training data and this model that is classification model will assign a new class for this test data. This classification model is very much helpful uh, for critical classification problem like the banking domain to identify the current transaction is fraud and transaction or not. Because uh, millions of transactions may be taken place per day in the banking domain and we need to identify whether the particular transaction is fraudulent or not. And this is very difficult for human being to identify the fraud and transaction. Hence, we will move to machine learning. And uh, this machine learning will solve this problem very efficiently okay, on the basis of past transaction data which are labeled as fraudulent. So, the machine will learn from this fraudulent transaction then uh, when the new transaction comes and which are labeled as useful or suspicious. If it is suspicious then the machine will take some closer review of that particular transaction then it will easily classify whether it is a normal or fraud and transaction. Right? Apart from this banking application the classification model will be very much helpful in other domains also for example image classification, disease prediction, uh, game that is win loss prediction of a particular game and weather prediction okay, and the handwriting recognition. So, these are some of the other important domains where the classification model will be very much used. Classification learning steps. There are uh, totally seven important steps there for uh, learning the classification model. First one is problem identification and identification of required data and data pre-processing and definition of transaction that is training data set and algorithm selection, training and evaluation of test data set. So, these are seven steps. Let us see all those things one by one. The very first step is problem identification. That is identification of your problem is most important one. If the problem is correctly defined, then you will get the correct result. Correct result. If the problem is correct, then result should also be correct, right? That is, the problem needs to be well-formed problem. That is, the goals and benefits should be written very carefully and that should be uh, given long-term impact. Once the problem got identified, then we need to identify the required data. That is, the required data set that exactly represent the identified problem which needs to be evaluated. Okay, so this is the required data. For example, if the problem is to predict the tumor is malignant or not, then we require the corresponding patient's problem. The, uh, we need to test the tumor whether the tumor is a serious one or non-serious one. Okay, so the patient's data are, that is the patients who are having the tumor data should be required here. The third one is data pre-processing. Initially, the data is gathered from different data sources and they are 
in the raw format and uh, and it is not ready to give immediate analysis right so data pre processing is very important that is data pre processing will transform uh, the identified data into required format before giving into the algorithm so in the transformation data cleaning and transforming the data into given format are the important steps here okay and this data pre processing step ensures that all unnecessary and irre irrelevant data will be removed from our data set hence the final data will be given to the machine learning algorithm the next one is defining training data set this is the most important one in the supervised learning uh, that is we need to gather the set of input meta object and corresponding output meta object that means for set of input x and what is the corresponding output that is y we need to gather initially that is the training data set needs to be actively representative of real world use of the given scenario okay so based on this scenario only the machine will learn then the new data will be classified correctly right suppose if we give x the corresponding output will be y okay if it learns properly then the future x will be definitely classified into y by the machine right the next one is algorithm selection which is the most critical step in the classification model uh, here we need to determine the structure of learning function and the corresponding learning algorithm that is based on the parameters of input data we need to select the best algorithm then only the classification uh, model will will provide the better result the next one is training that is training the model machine learning model here after identifying the learning algorithm and the learning algorithm will run on the training data set with required control parameters these control parameters will be given as input of the algorithm and these parameters may also be adjusted by optimizing performance on a subset that is subset of training data set okay and this subset is otherwise called as validation set okay the validation set is used to validate the algorithm the last step is evaluation step that is evaluation with the test data set okay so the training data is run on the algorithm and the algorithm's learning performance is measured here that is in the evaluation step okay if the suitable result is not obtained then what will happen the training is required with different data set that is different training data set okay and the training will continue until we reach the required output okay so far we have seen the introduction about the supervised learning here we learn the types of machine learning examples of supervised learning classification model and the classification learning steps and in the next class we will see k nearest neighbor algorithm thank you